My name's David Sain. I am uh, chairman of the foundation here at the community college and just delighted to be here today. Yeah. I'm going to talk today about my experiences in Vietnam. I was drafted in 1966 on, on Valentine's Day. My father took me to the Newton area where you were supposed to check in and I was immediately processed and taken to uh, Fort Jackson. On the way down there, we had, learned, had to learn our service number, US 53424072, sir. That's the number, it's still in my head. So from there, uh, did basic training, and then I was sent to Fort Eustis, Virginia, and worked in the motor pool well. I never did get advanced training because when I was 14 years old, I could overhaul a car engine. All I had to do was go in and learn the mechanical terminology, which was different. They called clutch play, free travel, and TI was technical inspections. From that, I learned those two things and I was turned loose. So then I was sent immediately to Fort Lee, Virginia for immediate departure to South Vietnam. So checked in there and a motor sergeant was there at the headquarters platoon where I was. And he asked me to, uh, about my background and everything, I said, well, I could overhaul a car engine. He said, you're gonna run the motor pool. So I ran the motor pool. And we were training, getting ready to go. Uh, we were a five, 508 quartermaster supply company. We supplied the fuel for the whole South. So we left for Vietnam. Uh, it was on a slow plane, cross country, prop plane. Then we got on a boat. We were on a ship for 28 days. Uh, that was interesting. Fortunately, we got there last, so we didn't have to uh, uh, do any, any kind of duties. We just lounged around and did whatever we wanted to do. It was pretty, pretty easy, but it got sort of boring. We were in a lot of storms. When you have a storm, they only had like two, three hundred commodes in one section, and there's several thousand men on the ship. Everybody was running to the commodes to relieve their stomach pain if you can imagine, and they were in line behind. Anyway, so we got to Vietnam. I ran the motor pool. I would go up and down the Mekong Delta with 10,000 gallons of fuel and to check our equipment in those territories down south of where Von Tau was. And so it got very intriguingly interesting because all the Viet Cong had to do was throw a grenade in that Navy vessel and I would have been sand at the bottom of the Mekong Delta Ocean. We were processing out to leave Vietnam, five of my guys and myself. We were uh, uh, supposed to leave the next morning, which we did, and we got on a chopper, and it was about a 30-minute flight to Tont Tontanook Air Base, where General Westmoreland was. In flight, we had bullet, bullets, bullet holes coming appear in the plane. It was sort of frightening. When we landed, they put us on a bus and we had to lay in the floor and the, the driver of the bus was in a triple wall steel cage. He took us in, which is about a third of a mile to the base. We were trapped there for three days. Uh, since General Westmoreland was there, the intent of the Viet Cong was to uh, kill, kill him. This was during the Tet Offensive. Now, a lot of people don't know what that is. That's when, that was the biggest buildup of the war. The Viet Cong threw everything they had anywhere at us, and it was pretty bad. So I was able, me, my guys and I were able to get on a jet three days later, and we were taking off, and Ken Burns' production, it's on, it's on video that he produced, Thompson Nuke Air Base. It was February 5th, 6th or 7th, and uh, we were taking off and a mortar round came in and knocked a big hole in the runway and the pilot, somehow or another, miraculously got us around that hole and we took off and came back to uh, Okinawa, refuel Atlanta, landed in uh, Hawaii, landed in California, got off the bus, people were rude, people were treating us like criminals. Uh, um, because a few troops in Vietnam made some mistakes, but most of us were there to try to save that country from communism. 
that was the whole purpose that we were there and we did our best. I'm proud of what I did. I'm, I'm, we saw a lot of kids. We, we would give them, if we had, had some kind of snack or something, we would give them whatever we had. Uh, and we had a lot of uh, Vietnamese that worked for us during the daytime. I think they fought us some at night, but you never know. That's what you didn't know. Everybody over there looked just alike, all the Vietnamese, north, south. They, the, the north's called Viet Cong and the south's called Vietnamese. So they're all the same people. And it was, uh, yes, it was interesting. We were like the brotherhood of the brotherhood. We protected each other, we watched each other. Walking back from my shower one night with one of my friends, I got bit by a rat. And the rat was as big as a cat, a big cat. Uh, my friend picked up a piece of tuba for and hit the rat over the head, killed it. I had to take rabies shots, 14 rabies shots. And it's right above your navel. And it feels like someone put a cigarette, a burning cigarette on your stomach. For two minutes it burned. The 12th of the 14 days I was sent to Saigon because I couldn't move. They strapped you down and I had fought it, I fought it and fought it because it hurt. Now a good friend of mine, Don Rudisel, he was over there at the same time. In fact, we got to see each other one day while he was there. He came by, he's a radio operator, a repairman. He came, he was in a school, so he came by and saw me at my motor pool. Uh, his mom, my mom called his mom and told her about me getting bit by a rat and she sent him cases of decon to his unit. Not cases, but probably about 10 or 15 bags or whatever, boxes, whatever. But, uh, we talk about that story. He's, he was one of my best friends all the way through high school, so we talk about that story often. I was in school, but I was drafted. When I was here out of high school, I made a couple of A's, maybe mostly B's and C's. I didn't have a plan at that time. I was just trying to get my business administration and our accounting degree. So when I came home from Vietnam, what the experience did for me was I grew up. I knew exactly what I wanted. Uh, I made straight A's. I came home a mature 21-year-old man. I think often of the men that we had down in the jungle area. All of us were in a jungle area uh, somewhat, but this was deeper jungle. And I knew personally three of the people. Uh, one of them was from Hickory. And I communicated with all those people over years. There's no one left. Every one of them has, has died from Agent Orange issues. So it's uh, that. When the government decided to produce, have the uh, product produced, they said we want to kill everything. Well, they did, they did a pretty good job. Uh, and I don't mean that ugly. I mean, it's just they weren't thinking about how it would impact the soldiers. So that's a bad situation that developed from that decision. Agent Orange continues to be an issue with all of us. They sprayed this foliage all over. We were on a, in a mountain, mountainous area. Then the water would come down the mountains and the streams. They would filter the water with a, a, a water truck filtering device. They didn't take, they took the trash out. They didn't take any chemicals out. So we drank, that was our water. That was our water supply. And shower and everything else. So it was a different experience. Like when you when you see a casket draped in a flag and it was one of your war friends, war buddies, you think about that. I often reflect back during that period of time, that day, thinking about my buddies that didn't make it home or, or died after they got home. Or it's, uh, it's a humble, respectful feeling that I have for that, that and all the troops that served.